Hi everybody, this is Dave Shopius. I've been working for the last couple weeks getting my robot arm tuned in for my B9 robot. Um, this is the second arm that I've been working on. There's the first one right there. I got the first one already. It's all set up and tuned. Uh, it works really good. I've got all the videos showing it. So what I thought I could do is uh, take all my settings for this arm out of the uh, Sabertooth uh, Kangaroo that I'm using in there and transfer it to that arm. Well, that didn't work. It's uh, I guess the motors are just a little bit uh, different from each other. And uh, in the motor world, in PID's um, settings, the um, little bit difference can mean a lot. So that's what happened here. I transferred the settings over and uh, I got a lot of clogging, which means it was jogging back and forth and hesitation and missing the uh, dead bands and everything else. So what I'm uh, what I'm controlling this with is um, a Sabertooth 2x32 um, motor controller with a kangaroo daughter board attached to it. That's the daughter board right there. And uh, controllers back here. Um, this is a uh, voltage choke that I've got wired into it. It's one of the features that the 2 times 32 Sabertooth has um, because of the regenerative uh, electricity that it puts out uh, you have to have either a battery or a choke on it so um, this is the only model that offers a choke. <clears throat> um, I've got uh, both arms going to be controlled by this Sabertooth um, this other saber tooth I have mounted over here is for my rail system that delivers the arm in and out of the uh, B9's torso. That's another story, another video. Um, there is the arm. And there is the, uh, the motor that we're controlling right there. And uh, the rest of the arm is up here. I've got other videos showing the rest of it. Um, you can see some of it. What it looks like over there but bottom line is uh, we're not going to worry about that now we're worrying about this and uh, the issue I was having like I said uh, the settings did not transfer over they, they did but they didn't work um, so uh, the saber tooth with the uh, kangaroo daughter board has got an auto tune feature and because of this, this is such an asymmetrical load. Everything's sitting outside of the motor. Uh, the auto tune, for some reason, is is failing. It to it was totally useless. I couldn't get a good tune. It, it it failed every time. So that left me with taking off all the load off of here and having the motor just up and down by itself, just so I could get a baseline. Then I put a ball back on. And then I had to spend the last two weeks setting the, um, the PID coefficients in the uh, program that I have uh, that the, the, uh, Dimension Engineering provides with the Kangaroo and the uh, Sabertooth uh, motor controllers. So you can get into them and, and really do your own setup and, and adjustments and things, which is great. It's a good, it's a good program. Um, it's just a little bit, um, it's not very user friendly for people like me that don't know a lot about co setting coefficients and um, motor settings and all that stuff. Anyway, it's all, um, it hooks up through USB, the back of the computer. We've got a control cable that comes up and plugs right into the control um, input of the, right here, the kangaroo. That's what all this is. And then um, the motor is hooked up power to the uh, power plant of the robot. This is like a 64 amp uh, power converter. It takes 120, converts it into uh, 12 volt DC <clears throat> uh, and provides 64 amps. Um, got it plugged in right here and plugged in right here. So uh, nice big wire. This thing, uh, when it starts rocking, will pull up to 30 amps. Mostly on startup or when it's really running fast and hard. Uh, usually, 
normal uh, normal movements will only pull up up, up to 20 amps. So that uh, power plant I have over there is uh, strong enough and, and it provides enough amperage uh, to run both of my arms. So when they're both moving, I'll expect it to, them to be pulling up to 40 amps, each, uh, 40 amps total. So getting back to my problem I was having with uh, the auto tune failing, this is the uh, this is the first page of the Dimension Engineering. Uh, this called um, in what is this called? Describe is the describe software. So uh, this is my first arm. It's in channel one. Uh, the kangaroo is set up in here, and the second one is channel two. This is the one I've been working on here. And you can see um, it, it's pretty neat. They, they let you um, adjust the dead dead band and the um, exponential, uh, whatever that that makes things a little more sloshy or soft around uh, the input. Like if you have a joystick or something, and then you could adjust. Uh, it shows you graphically here as you pull it in and out. I have a set of 2%, <clears throat> which I found was good. And then the, the experiential, you can see how it kind of adjusts the, um, it's kind of like a ramping effect. It just makes it a little softer at the input. Um, I found 22, 122 was good for both my motors, 122%. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, uh, like you can see here, it says in big letters here, these settings are automatically filled out when you press auto-tune on the kangaroo. <laughs> well, um, yeah, auto-tune works good, but not in my case. Uh, be, again, I've got all this weight hanging out. This is like about a couple pounds out here. The whole thing weighs about 12 pounds when it's all put together. But the, uh, the motor is lifting probably about four pounds up and down most of it being out here so that it just it just failed it wouldn't even wouldn't even look at it so what I had to do was uh, start tinkering like I said I got a I got a a, a baseline tune with everything off and then I took uh, I have uh, you have like again you have channel one and channel two um, my my first arm was tuned in on channel one I had to do the same thing on that I, I screwed with all the the coefficient um, inputs till I got it running right, and uh, now I'm working on my my second arm channel two, and uh, I had the same problem. This one was real one really gave me fits for some reason. The um, I had to, I ended up putting the dead band in here. <clears throat> uh, first, look at the I'm sorry. The um, first we have dead band for position, dead band for speed, and then. Which nice let you lets uh, this it lets the the uh, kangaroo shut itself off when the motor comes to a stop, which is good. And then you also then you come down into the uh, you know what if you have analog or, or digital input, which I have a analog. Let's take a look at that real quick. In the other uh, videos, you'll see it. I have a a soft pot. It's a paper thin pot that sits right back in there with a little. Um, pin that goes in and rubs on it back and forth like a wiper. So it, uh, it, it feeds back to um, the kangaroo where exactly everything is. So anyway, um, independent mode is something else. Uh, it's, uh, it just tells the software there's two different motors here working independently. Uh, and it, uh, it just goes on and on. Um, response time is for the wiring, I think. Um, and we're getting into things I'm not really sure what they were. That's my biggest problem I had. We, this, this is the, uh, the, the section down here is your uh, PID coefficient settings. And usually you have three settings for PID. This has one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it has a, a minimum power setting, and they tell me that's uh, to overcome resistance when the power when the motor starts up. It has a position gain setting, uh, a res position reset time, 
slow speed gain, fast speed gain, and speed reset time. So uh, there's six settings I had to tinker with on this side. You can see all the, the math equations here. And uh, most of my settings were done right here. And it, like I said, it took me like two weeks to get everything going. It was, it was frustrating. I got to admit, it was frustrating. Um, <clears throat> when you compare the two sides, the first settings that I, I dialed in uh, with the second motor, they're really not all that different. However, um, the pro a little bit of a setting in one will throw off a setting in another, and um, a little setting difference between the two motors is huge in the motor world. So, what's nice about what's also nice about this is when I'm turning tuning it in, I can I can they have a live test feature where I can plug in directly to the kangaroo. And it, it lets me um, normal range of operations. I can set it differently if I want to, but this is already dialed in. And um, they let you actually see by pulling a slider up and down how your tune works. And with another cool thing is, and this is a beta program that Dimension Engineer sent me. I'm not sure this is even out in the public. I was really lucky enough, maybe they just got tired of me complaining because <laughs> I was having such a hard time with some of this stuff. Uh, and they're really good with their customer support. They, they um, sent me this beta uh, program with, with ramping and acceleration features. So I can, I can, I can um, depending on what I want to do in tester, I can limit uh, my speed and my acceleration, or I can choose not to limit it at all, and I can set different settings in here. Um, or I can just leave it checked where it is, and it, um, it'll it test the um, settings that I've already put in there. So, for example, um, I'll take, I can take this, and you can see it follow up and down. I'll let you see the arm in a minute. But you can also see what the commands are that are, are being sent by clicking this thing down here. You can also do it with an open loop. We're not going to worry about that right now. But you can see the commands up here and the position here in red. And you can exactly see how the commands react to the position you want to, want to go to. based on where you put the position. You can also do this in speed mode too. Um, there's a little live speed thing here, but we're just going to work on the position right now. Um, or you can just uh, let, let the computer do it by hit the step. It'll, it'll go 50% of where you're at. Back and forth. Now, you're probably noticing the clog in the, cogging a little bit. Uh, and that is one of the issues that I've been fighting, but it's to the point now where I'm just tired, I guess. <clears throat> and I've got it really close. And it, it's, it's, it kind of hits the dead band really nice. No, not really. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to tune it in a little bit more, I guess. But um, it, it, is, uh, it is what it is. So... I mean, in, in real life, here's what it looks like. And that's what I'm talking about. It gets and it overshoots the dead band and kind of goes back and forth. And I've been fighting that for weeks, <clears throat> but it's a lot better than it was. So one of the nice things you can do here is I can I can limit the acceleration uh, to where I have it in the all inputs tab. And I think I've got the speed set at 3,000. For example, I can put in 3,000. And uh, I can limit the acceleration to like, let's say, 2,400 and see if I want to change it, how that will affect anything. And you can see how it, uh, it actually did. It, it slowed it down. So... If I want to try to get rid of that um, 
overshooting, I can I can try to maybe put that at 22 and see how it reacts. It cogs a little, cogs a little bit more, or maybe 27. Uh, and you can see it kind of jumps around quite a bit, or maybe even 20. Uh, 21, let's try 21. It actually, on long spans, it runs pretty good. You see, it overshoots and jumps back. So I do got a little bit more tuning to do, I guess. You see what I'm up against here. <laughs> danger, danger, Will Robinson. That's funny. Okay. Anyway, um, just thought I'd share that with you. And I'm really close. And uh, I think I'm almost there. If not there, I, I just might leave it the way it is and deal with it. But um, I can, uh, let me drop this down to like 400, 400, and um, leave it the way it is in the tab setting. So, I'm close, um, it's frustrating, but I'm close. Uh, these PID settings are a nightmare, getting these things tuned in, so um, a lot of things affect them. So anyway, thanks for watching, and you guys uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.